So let's um, do this. Let's attempt to vlog. I've not vlogged in so long. I'm not sure I will be any good, but come along with me today. I've already had a coffee. I've done some practicing on French on a French app that I have. I've done some reading of my Kindle and I've had a shower. The book that I'm reading right now is so good. It's a series. I'm just on book one. I'm just over halfway. It's quite a big book, this first book, but it's called Reign of the Dragons. And it's like a dragon shifter romance. Just finished doing my morning prayers to my deity who is no one other than Mother Mary right now. My altar is, let's have a look. I'm quite happy with my altar space right now. I love this Mary tapestry that Trey got. I've got some white sage incense burning. I sage before I do my prayers. I always sage the altar and my whole body. I won't go over what I do is pretty private, my sort of morning ritual prayers, but they're never like first thing in the morning. I always do that stuff after I've had a shower and I'm feeling like fresh and ready for the day. And I also do, normally would do it after I've pulled cards. I'm back to doing one daily card and one daily oracle. This week I've just been using my Crystal Visions deck, which some of you might know is my favourite deck, tarot deck to be honest. It's got dragons in, it's got awesome colours. So I got the Seven of Cups today. It is the perfect card for where I'm at right now. How can I explain it? I'm just really all over the place and I'm not oh my god I have to show you the little dog walking up the road hang on one sec there he is I don't know if you can see his little white poof but the dogs around here oh god there's a car coming they just wander around take themselves on little walks on their own it is honestly the cutest thing and they just like potter along and you're like oh hey man they also just come into your own property as well, not the house, but into our garden. Look at him, uh, just out on my morning walk. Yep, I, I love it. Isn't it just the cutest thing ever? I'm sorry about my shaky camera footage, but I'm zoomed in. After that super cute interruption, distracted by the local dog having his walk. <laughs> Yeah, so the Seven of Cups is a perfect card for me. I'm all over the place. So I sort of asked for like what energy will help me have the most productive and positive day, which I always ask when I pull my daily cards. I think it's a great way to pull your daily cards, not saying like what is the energy of the day because you're allowing the tarot to dictate for you instead of harnessing the energy of the tarot to harness your own power within the tarot to, you know predict your day and how you can harness those energies to have the most productive and positive day for yourself yeah so the seven of cups my arm is killing me i'm not used to this vlogging is perfect because right now i like want to do everything but i want to catch up with you guys here on youtube i want to do my gardening i want to read this book i want to practice french i want to deal with like loads of stuff do my kitchen witchery i have to sort of calm down and focus on like what i really need to do next like what do i really want and also actually putting steps towards that stuff so that's why i've sort of picked up the camera and i'm like yeah i'm gonna vlog because i know i want that but the seven of cups energy you can often sort of just be like yeah I'm gonna do that yeah that's what I want like I had this vision and that not actually making any progress on the vision sort of staying in a frozen mode and isolating yourself and that's another like thing that came up when I got the seven of cups is I felt like um like isolating myself from putting myself out there and connecting um with others and you guys and stuff and that's like another reason why it's important for me to learn french because i live in france now and so that i am able to communicate and connect with others 
but also I'm doing so much and it would be great for me to share it with others but been holding back from that and I'm not really sure why so I felt like the seven of cups energy really called that out for me today which is good the other card that I got as an oracle I used the earth magic oracle today and I got the I'm just seeing where that little doggy's going is he coming in here going back home I think okay I've been using this earth magic oracle for the last like week really and this is the card I got today the love compassion card which is just perfect like I've really been with my working with mother mary that's been a big aspect of the energy that i've been channeling from her and working with her is like holding that light that love that compassion that energy that christ consciousness within my heart and having that for myself having compassion for myself having love for myself and also for others trying to not be judgmental and being more um, conscious of my actions and my words it's hard but like I catch myself a bit quicker so it is something I'm working on so I feel like that was a good card just to remind me yeah to stay in my heart and stay compassionate so now it's like about 11 a.m and I'm really hungry so I'm going to make my morning smoothie and I'll show you what I do for that. And then I think I'm going to make some bread rolls for today. And that will be my kitchen witchery for today. So while I'm making the bread, I'm really conscious to put so much loving energy into an intention, energy and intention into the bread that I'm making so that it can feel the people who consume the food, which will be my family and myself with that intention. So kitchen witchery is something I'm trying to do more of. I feel like making bread or cakes is the perfect food item to make for kitchen witchery because you're able to really sort of set that intention. And soups is really good too, because you're like stirring, stirring that intention. Let's go do this, let's go get breakfast. Some ice in. I don't always put ice, but um, my milk isn't cold today, so. Um, I always like to have two bananas. And the bananas have, have to be yellow with brown, some brown spots on. These are a, a little bit less ripe than I'd like. I'd like a few more spots, but this is all I've got. So. And then some strawberries. I would like more in there, but I can only fit so much in this damn little thing. And then I always add some milled flaxseed. It's super healthy for you. I either use soy milk or oat milk, and today I fancied oat milk in here. That's it, I blend it up, and the bananas and the strawberries make it sweet enough. And that's my finished smoothie, I've already had almost half of it already. I drink this smoothie really quick because I'm always so hungry by the time I finished all my morning rituals and I want to break my fast with a healthy smoothie and I do always drink this in like less than a minute. Sometimes I'll have like a snack of toast after this but I try to always break my fast, not including coffee because I do have a soy latte when I wake up, just one. Yeah, I go a few hours before I will then have my smoothie. Mm. It's so good. So I'm going to finish this and then check on my plants in my plant room and then I'll be back with you to bake my bread for some kitchen witchery. Okay? Mm -hmm. So before I start on the dough for the bread, I realise I really need to take the compost out. But it's quite a little adventure, so I thought I'd take you with me. Come along. We also have coffee grinds that we compost. Thank you. 
add into your bowl, your mixing bowl, one and a half cups of warm water. I'll leave the recipe that I use and the website that it comes from in the description if you want to make this yourself. And let me know if you try it because I do think it's a great bread roll recipe. So then we want to add three teaspoons of dry active yeast. There's the three teaspoons of yeast and then we want to add two tablespoons of sugar. A little mix. And then you want to set a timer for 10 minutes. You want to leave that for 10 minutes to activate. All right, currently I'm working with a very minimal space in the kitchen. Um, I'm hoping to get my kitchen done soon this year at some point and have a perfect kitchen for all my kitchen witchery. But right now, very minimal space. You can see my mixer is not in an idle space. So um, we just deal with what we have. So this is the dough hook for your mixer. And then I find it easier to add the hook after. So I put my bowl in. Hook that on. And then you just want to start at a low speed while you combine it. Okay, now that's combined. While it's mixing, I'm gonna slowly add in more flour. So now you want to just remove the hook and it's a very kind of stringy dough is what we want. You want to remove this dough from this bowl into an oil bowl. So I just got some vegetable oil and with a pastry brush I just brush that all around the bowl. What you want to do is just spin this around because you want to coat, coat both sides with oil. There we are. And then what we what I do now is cover our dough with a clean damp. So I damp this with warm water. So a clean damp a kitchen towel cloth. You just lightly cover that and then you want to leave it to rise in a warm place for one hour. Um, so again, you want to set your timer for this. I always put it by my seedlings, which are by a little heater in my plant room. So I'll take that over there, leave it for an hour, and then I'll be back with you when we form this into rolls and bake our bread. So I just wanted to quickly remind you that this is kitchen witchery. So you really do want to take this time while you're baking your bread to set your intention, that you want to put in to your spell craft, your bread, right? So normally in kitchen witchery, we want to put love, kindness, compassion, but you might have a certain type of energy that you want the food to harness. The best time I find to set your intention is when you're pouring in the ingredients. If you're handling the dough, then while you're kneading would be good, but I tend to do it if I'm using a mixer, which is the easiest way to make dough, is to um, set your intention while you're pouring in the ingredients. And um, any time that you're sort of handling the dough, so later on while I'm making the, the balls for the rolls, that's when I'll really be sort of pouring my energy in and you can sort of channel your energy up through your chakras and out into your hands or you can pull it directly from your heart and out into your hands and you really then can um, form your intention within the food that you're making, in this case, dough. So just a little reminder um, not to forget the intention setting in your kitchen witchery and 
after a while it becomes really subconscious you don't have to do it consciously and you'll still feel it feel the effects in your food but as you begin um, it's definitely worth being more conscious of it and uh, putting the intention in meaningfully okay now while I wait for my bread to rise and I've also got leftovers of a pie from dinner last night in the oven to have for lunch and um, I am going to kick back in my plant room because currently this is the quietest room in the house although it's very echoey I hope that doesn't pick up on the mic speaking of mics the microphone on my phone is broken or something is wrong with it it has a weird buzz so hence why I've always got my headphones in while I'm recording just so you can hear me without a jarring buzz I have made myself a soy milk latte and it's in one of my favorite cups which is this Mother Mary and Bernadette cup that I picked up when I went to see the um, miracle like cave chapel which is in Lourdes in France um, where many years ago a peasant girl Bernadette met Mother Mary and or had a vision of Mother Mary in this cave and then a spring sprung from the ground and it was a healing spring and I think as far as I know it is the most um, visited place in the world for miracle healings and even science has proven a handful of those healings to be real miracles so I feel kind of blessed to live so close to that place it's only about an hour from here it's so cool it's so dedicated to my beautiful mother Mary who I owe so love and feel very deeply connected to so everything feels very aligned for me to be here right anyway I'm going to kick back and I think what I'm going to do is do a few readings on my TikTok channel so if you did not know when I have time I like to pop on TikTok lately and do readings for people it's just a way for me to be able to give to others um, when I have the time and I'm in the right space to and give a few free quick readings on there and it's um, kind of fun so if you're on TikTok and you'd like to follow me please do and if you would like a reading you can leave a question over there and hopefully I will get round to it I get in a lot of questions lately so I'm not able to really keep up with every single question but I try my best and you can find me at Helky Rain and yeah I'll see you over there I'm going to get on with that now I can't record myself while I do that because I'm using my phone for that also <laughs> okay just so you know I'm finishing up a piece of pie from last night for my lunch yum why do I need a water bottle this spray bottle you want to spray the bread rolls halfway through with cold, ice cold water. So I'm just going to stick this in there while I prepare my bread rolls. Okay, so first you want to either grease your tray or line it. I always line my trays. I just, you know, I don't have time to be cleaning my trays. They don't fit really in the dishwasher, so I like to always line my trays. I've got my dough that has been rising for pretty much well over an hour. I don't know if you can see me, but I have changed clothes because I'm now in my like dirty gardening clothes. But I am clean. Whoa, it's really risen. <laughs> so I've left it a bit longer than normal. So if you leave it longer, it's even better. It rises even more. Basically you just want to try and make 16 as even as you can rolls with your dough okay so that's very messy <laughs> i was still sending good intention through lots of love to these sticky little buggers and now i will leave them for 30 minutes to rise in here and then i will bake them my rolls dough has been rising 
for half an hour and now I just melted some vegan butter, just like a tablespoon's worth. And then you just wanna coat the top of the rolls with that. Last time I made these, I sprinkled them with poppy seeds. So I love poppy seed bread. So that's a good option if you like that. Um, but today I just want golden crusty rolls and they're ready to go in the oven. So I put those in the middle shelf on 200 Celsius or you, if you're in America, I think that would be 400 Fahrenheit. And then they just need about between, I believe, 18 to 20 minutes. Um, but halfway, you want to spray them with that spray, that ice cold water that I put in the freezer earlier. So I will be back when I do that. So these have been baking for 10 minutes. So I'm just going to spray them. Let's grab my glove lightly with this ice cold water. and then bake them for another eight minutes. And they might need another two after that time is up and it looks like they're done. So it took 18 minutes, nice and crusty. They will be perfect for, to have alongside dinner tonight and anyone who wants a snack at lunch. Yeah. Success, I will taste test them now. Let's see if they're as good as my last batch. So normally you need them to sort of cool down for a little bit so that they don't just go like really soft when you break them, but they taste good. Mm. Perfect. Highly recommend this recipe. And yeah, proud to share these with the rest of the family. so that I can come to the shop and just pick up a few bits. I doubt that I'll do any filming in there because I get really nervous in the in French supermarkets and stuff. Yeah, adapting to the life here and not speaking the language makes it a little difficult. I'm not sure if you'll even hear me because um, I haven't got my headphones with me so I haven't got my mic plugged in but fingers crossed this sounds okay just to update you that's what I'm doing and yeah I'll see you later on. Well every time I go in on my own the cashier always talks to me which never happens when I go over other people and it's so embarrassing because even though I might have learnt little phrases and stuff. I just get so flustered and embarrassed and it was so busy in there and I just saw, oh. man, I need to hurry up and learn French because it's so awkward and I'm embarrassing. Anyways, time to go home. I am now editing and realized I forgot to sign out for this vlog. Nothing more eventful happened on this day. I went home and made dinner. I don't remember what now. But here is some cute footage of Sage. He was just out in the garden. I don't know if you saw him in the first clip, but he's now been allowed to go outside and this has been so exciting for him. I was obviously really nervous as a cat mum. He's always been an indoor cat, so letting him out made me nervous. I was thinking, I hope he comes back and nothing happens to him. But 
it's been a few weeks now and he has been loving life more than ever. I've actually never seen him so happy and he's quite a content happy cat but he is loving it. He is a bit of a hunter and we are a vegan household so that has been a difficult adjustment. He's constantly bringing in every day a lot of mice, shrews, lizards. We save them as quickly as we can but we do have a few casualties. We have actually created, well Trey has created a death altar. We use the goddess Iris to oversee that altar and recently Iris came to me and I'll do a video soon about the goddess Iris. Uh, it's been a very interesting journey here with her and a, a big surprise to me her coming through because I'd never even heard of her and then she came through to me one day when I was practicing and she's um stayed and possibly because it's it has helped create this death altar and it's great to have this place because we can send love and light to the little beings that Sage might have killed off and give them a nice place to pass over and it also helps us work with the process of death which is not an easy process. Now you can see Sage has come in by choice from outside to have a good old snuggly time. He loves his snuggles and I'm so glad he's still the cuddly cat. He hasn't gone all feral and wild. He's feral and wild in the sense that he's hunting so much, but he still loves his cuddles. That is everything, so thanks for watching guys. And hopefully I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, check out my podcast. I've been really loving doing my podcast lately. We've got tons of episodes up. It's called It's a Sign. I'll leave a link down below. And if you would love to support me, the best way you could do that is going over to my Etsy store, which I'll also leave a link in the description, and you can order a reading from me, and I would love to connect with the guides and, and do a reading for you, okay? I'm wishing you a beautiful day, all my love and blessings. Bye!